Hey guys, welcome back. Yvonne Blasquez here. So I've got some awesome news. First off, I made a video over a year ago talking about anti-nutrient autophagy. Now, what does that mean? Well, essentially what it means is it's based off of fiber as well as polyphenols, how they can be anti-nutrients. And most people assume, or at least it was assumed that this can be a negative thing like lectins and so forth, right? Um, inhibits um, absorption of micronutrients and so forth, right? Well, not so fast because there's new research basically corroborating what I talked about in that video. So essentially, in this schematic, as you'll see, fiber has anti-nutritive effects. And essentially, it decreases the absorption of macronutrients, not necessarily micronutrients. And it shows it here. This is a new study that just came out this year. Now, what's important about this is number one, it, reducing some of the absorption of micronutrients is actually can be favorable. What I like to think about is fiber as a modulator. It reduces over overabsorption of macronutrients, but also overabsorption of minerals, micronutrients. Two examples: phosphorus and iron. Okay, um, too much of those minerals can be toxic, have toxicity effects. Fiber helps to modulate that by almost optimizing our absorption of them. Now, what I also want to talk about is uncoupling protein one, as I recently talked about in my seaweed video, which seaweed is a, high, is a rich source of fiber. Uncoupling protein one increases mitochondrial uncoupling, which generates heat production and is a energy, increases energy expenditure, basically translation fat loss. And um, so fiber has been shown to increase uncoupling protein one. So indirectly, it also can increase mitochondrial coupling in that manner. Um, and also what I'd like to say is that fiber alters our ingestion digestion ratio. So the first law of thermodynamics, energy balance, right? Calories in versus out. Well, fiber doesn't necessarily violate it. What it does is it facilitates calories out, but it does it in a different way, not from energy. Well, actually energy expenditure indirectly, as I talked about just, just, just recently about uncoupling protein. What it does is we don't absorb 100% of the calories but it also does something really unique, and you're gonna hear this here first. This came from this study. Essentially, when energy is made available via fermentation rather than enzymatic degradation of glucose, in other words, when energy is made from fermentation from our gut and producing short-chain fatty acids, heat loss will be greater than simply breaking down carbohydrates like in our small intestine and in, so in our stomach. So the net energy content of fibers will be further reduced when heat loss is taken into consideration. That's huge. That is a different aspect. So it's not just that, in other words, here's my postulation, okay? Or we're increasing the thermic effect of fiber, but we're not, so the thermic effect of fiber has been tested. It's been shown to not be that high. But they were looking at the thermic effect from the glucose degradation standpoint, in other words, fiber being broken down in your stomach and in your small intestine. They didn't look at the fermentation of fiber, and that could actually generate heat loss on the back end, no pun intended. That's truly remarkable, and that's what this study basically insinuates or implicates. Now, I could be wrong in saying that, but that's, that was my interpretation of it. Nonetheless, studies have shown that short-chain fatty acids do drive up fat oxidation. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys, that the key to overeating sobriety is satiety. And fiber is a potent stimulus to satiety on many levels. And lastly, I want to end it with this, guys. What's a take home? Well, you know, in ketogenic diets, you have to be keto adapted. You need to be on keto for a while to get adapted and reap the benefits. Why? I like to say the same thing with fiber. We need to get fiber adapted. So we, we may have the fiber flu, right? Symptoms like bloating because our, our gut, our gut microbiome isn't colonized to fiber. So we need to get fiber adapted and that takes time. Maybe I'll do some future videos on that. Otherwise, as always, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, tune in next time.